Hello, 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 and welcome to another featured designer. This is actually our featured designer from November, uh, but schedule didn't work out, so here we are in December, and I'm super excited that Tiff Nealon will be joining me. So uh, if you're not familiar with who I am, I am Jessica. I'm the knitting pattern designer behind Snickerdoodle Knits, design coach, podcaster behind po Pattern Design Circle, founder of In Tandem, and I'm so excited to be here. Hello, welcome to those joining live. Super excited to see you. Uh, Tiff should be joining us shortly, um, and we'll talk all about Tiff and her her design journey, her design process. If you have any questions while we're chatting, go ahead and pop them in the comments. There will be a replay available. And I see Tiff is here. So I am. How's everybody doing today? Let us know in the comments. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Let me just adjust this. I think I'm cut, cutting myself off. Yes, it does. It always does that when you split it and then yeah. you have to, like, you, you get everything perfect and then you have out. to readjust it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but my, uh, I have my tripod, the, like, rolled up all the way it can go, so I'd have to, like, move all the legs. So, oh. like... <laughs> Yeah, like, try to not cut my like a good adjustable arm oh yes <laughs> well how are you today Jeff? Um, i'm good good i'm so yeah, excited much better <laughs> <laughs> yes good yes yeah. you've uh i mean yeah. lots of families i know for yeah. sure have been dealing with illness and you aren't exempt <laughs> oh my god yeah it was a little intense because it was staggered through the two weeks so like <laughs> maximum disruption but yeah we're on the other side of it fingers crossed <laughs> yeah. uh, looks like somebody accidentally after joined so anyway <laughs> i'm so glad you're all feeling better <laughs> tip do you want to share a little bit about who you are where you're at what you do? sure um yeah so um i live in connecticut with my husband and two daughters. I have a 12, almost 12 year old daughter. Um, her birthday is the end of this month. Uh, 10 year olds and two Labrador sons who are very uh, hilarious and rambunctious. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I've been doing knitwear design for a little bit over three years full time. I um, decided to take it on full time in October of 2019. And of course, little did I know that it was going to be like right, you know, the start of the pandemic. And <laughs> yeah. In some ways, I think it was sort of a blessing that I had already like made that decision to leave my other job and to do this full time from home because I think I wouldn't have had a choice, you know, looking back. And um, I'm very type A, I'm a planner. <laughs> and so I think being thrown into that without it being my plan would have been like, you know, completely like nerve wracking and chaotic for me. But because it was my plan and I had already kind of like integrated myself into that. I mean, it was still completely nutty. I had two kids distance learning and, um, you know, I hadn't signed up to be like a teacher on top of it. So that was a little, a little bit insane, but it was good. <laughs> um, all things considered, it was okay. And, um, but you know, I've never, I've not regretted it for a day that I kind of made that decision. Um, that being said, <laughs> I definitely, you know, part of my decision was like, you know, to have like more flexibility in my work hours and my schedule and whatnot. And while I have that, I would say I certainly don't work less now <laughs> than I did before. Um, you know, unless like, unless like 15 hours a day <laughs> is considered less than it was before, then I'm not working less. Yeah. But, um, but it's been good. Yes. 
that's that's so wonderful. Um, there are a couple of folks in the comments that I was trying to respond to. Somebody oh. wasn't able to hear, but me explaining what to do when it helps. So hopefully she was able, I said to try leaving and coming back. So hopefully she was able to figure it out. And oh. somebody else asked if there will be a replay. Yes, there will be a replay. It will be posted later. So I don't see the comments. <laughs> Is that normal? I have no idea. Oh, but okay. I'll pay attention to them. So okay. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> yeah. um, so this is my favorite question to ask. I think it's in your seat, the least favorite question. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love to ask, what are three words you would use to describe yourself? Oh, to describe myself? Yes. <sighs> well, ambitious overly ambitious <laughs> um oh, wow i'm dedicated for sure um and i think i'm gonna say creative even though that's a pat on my back my own back um no i think I, mean, I love to create and it's not just knitwear it's like i love all the you know it's all the crafts i'm the type of person that's like oh i can totally do that myself and then i do so yes um, yeah I love that. yes um i love to ask that question because we tend to now like when, when we have discussions about designing and knitting we talk about designing and knitting but like we don't actually talk about personalities <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. a fun way to like get to know people better yeah, so thanks yeah. for sharing yeah. <laughs> um so how did you first start knitting in the first place? So, um, so uh, friends of mine were knitters. My sister-in-law was a knitter. And so, like I said, I've always been like, I'm a crafty person. I'm very hands-on and like do things. And so I had already kind of been like watching them and thinking like, oh, I really, like, I totally want to get into this. And at the time, um, I was working interior design in the office, but also from home. And like I said, two young kids. And I was kind of like, you know, I know myself. I know when I get interested in something that like I dive in and <laughs> a thousand percent. And so I had kind of been like, you know, dragging my heels. And ironically, like my sister-in-law had made a gift for someone. And I was like, okay, that's it. Like I'm learning how to do it. <laughs> this is just too cool and so of course it was like february and it had like snowed and so the day i decided to do this is like one of those days that like you really don't want to leave your house for anything and so i like pull up a tutorial video on how to do it and i'm like well i don't have any knitting needles like what how can i do this like i'm i want to learn this today so i i pulled out like my kids like colored pencils I sharpened the colored pencils I was like this will work it has like the right tip <laughs> and I remembered that my daughter had gotten a loom kit for her birthday which is like I said the end of December and she hadn't started using it and was kind of like not really that interested in it and I so I knew where it was because it wasn't so far past that like you know we'd lost it in the chaos of toys and so I taught myself to learn on some random cold February day with colored pencils and like the cheapest acrylic yarn that you've like zero stretch. I mean, it was like, yes, <laughs> I don't even know. It was awful. But I was like, this is amazing. And so my husband came home and was like, what did you do today? I'm like, oh, well, I taught myself how to knit. And like, look what I created. And it's funny because it was close to Valentine's Day and we did wind up going out for dinner. Like we go out as a family for Valentine's Day. So we went to our favorite pizza place and I like brought it with me. That was, so on day one of learning to knit, I brought my knitting in public. I've done it every day since that anytime I'm out in public, I have knitting. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and so there I was like sitting at the table, like knitting or practicing the knit stitch with colored pencils and the rest is history. <laughs> it is so fun. And I think that just like, you know, like it just is an example of your creativity. Like you were like, just being resourceful and yeah. using what you had. And stuff. Yeah. It's so fun. Uh, so what was your first project? 
what, what were you making with your color so, pencil? So, so here's the thing I think about being self-taught is that like, there's no one there to tell you that like, what you're doing, like that you've skipped many steps. <laughs> yes. So the first, I, so the first thing I decided to knit was a hat for my daughter. So immediately I went out, like I went to Michael's or something and I bought circular needles and I bought the stuff. And so I'm, I'm knitting this hat and then I start the crown decreases and I'm like, how do you do this? Like, what do you do? And so then I like got, a, I had, I had actually purchased like several different circular needles. So I was then knitting off of like two or three different needles, like in order to do it, to, you know, to decrease it. And so I finished it and it fit her great. And then I remember a friend, like telling a friend, and she's like, your first project was a hat in the round. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's like, I found a project that I thought was fun. And we, I don't know, if, we probably don't have it anymore because again, it was like, not good yarn and it you know like it felt really like i don't know it wasn't it wasn't like a soft like snuggly hat that you wanted to wear that like my kids wanted to wear yes. but but it fit her and she did actually like appease me she wore it for a couple of weeks and then i immediately was like okay let me redo this for you with like yarn that you can stand to be like have <laughs> your forehead uh, but yeah, and the second thing I made was a cowl for my dog. Aww. We have our Weimaraner who has since passed. Um, hated going outside in the winter, and so that was my second project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love what you know, like what you mentioned of when you don't know what's difficult. It's like you don't have like there's so many mindset barriers we can put up just because of right somebody saying it's difficult or like you need to know all these things first and like I don't like we all have different learning styles right we pick up on different things more easily than others yeah like and so like for some people maybe it's the knit and the pearl that are really hard mm -hmm. but then increasing and decreasing just makes sense right. and you know other people it's flipped or whatever but yeah. I think of that a lot when folks talk about things like brioche and different techniques where they're like, it's just so impossible. It's so hard. Like, you know, everybody just talks about it being hard and they haven't even like looked at it yeah. or like considered it. And I don't know. I personally, when I first tried brioche, reading the pattern, Pattern the instructions were super <laughs> weird and confusing, but doing it, it's like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. This is so yeah. crazy. Yeah. So it's like, it's just, you know, pulling up a tutorial, it made a lot of sense, but trying to read the pattern, it didn't. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, yeah. I, I think, I mean, I actually, I could not do brioche, like, for the life of me. I could not do it until I learned how to knit continental and then that was like a game changer mm. all of a sudden then like brioche like clicked and i was like oh this is amazing i can do this i don't ever do it but like i can yeah now. yeah um but i don't know so when i knit right-handed i flick and i don't know why i just like my fingers could they just like couldn't do it they could not do it and it drove me nuts and i and of course because like i'm one of those people that are like don't tell me i can't do this yes. <laughs> it drove me completely nuts um but it's so funny i love you know just you talking about yourself and your experience i can totally relate in so many ways like personality wise we're probably very similar yeah. the type a you know like very determined but like if you tell me i'm not going to be able to do it i'm going to prove you wrong yeah. oh yeah yep <laughs> yes. absolutely oh that's so funny so so then you want to share more about like what projects you started to work on and how you started to think about designing and how that so all of yeah so kind of on that same note of you know I didn't really realize like what was considered an advanced technique or a beginner technique. It was just kind of like, I'm drawn to this thing, so I'm gonna do it, whatever. Um, so I had knit something for my 
older daughter that required seaming. I needed to do like mattress stitch to seam it. And so, so I did that and it was great and fine. And I thought to myself, coming from an interior design background, I said, you know, this pattern would be amazing with like a herringbone stitch border. So I figured out how to, I learned how to knit it. And I kind of like rewrote a pattern for myself, scaling it up to my size with the herringbone. And so I did it. And I remember wearing it out and people being like, oh my God, where did, you know, like, where did you get that? That's amazing. And I'm like, oh, I knit it, you know, kind of like, like, you know, no one, I don't know, people don't ever ask me now, when yeah. things, but that for some reason yes. was like different enough that people actually like cared to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was kind of like, oh, okay, I don't know, that's pretty cool. And then as I started looking through Ravelry, I noticed that there were like hardly any herringbone stitch patterns. And I really wanted to like knit everything in it. I just, yes. I love it. So, I was kind of like, all right, well, I'm just gonna like write, you know, a pattern for myself. And so like writing it for yourself is one thing, like doing your own measurements and getting that. So especially um, with a garment. What's that? that? <laughs> especially with a garment. Right. Yeah. So I like had figured it all out for myself. And then my younger daughter, Kaylee, loved it. I wanted it also. So I thought, okay, well, let me like figure this out for her body size. And so then I wound up buying like all these books on pattern grading and sizing, because I thought like, it was really in my head, I thought like, being able to just adapt things for like the three of us, not necessarily that it was, you know, gonna lead me into the <laughs> world of like pattern design. Um, and, you know, I don't know, like, it's funny because I think that, I think that a lot of times, like, we create things that we love for ourselves, and, and you're kind of, like, unsure, like, am I the only person who will love this, or will it resonate with other people, right? Like, and as an artist, which I think we all are, um, you can't help but, like, take it personal if things aren't well received. And so it's really like, it's this like a stressful, emotional, like bridge that we have to like go over every single time <laughs> yes. of like putting something out there and then having the world judge it, right? Yeah. And so initially I thought like, I don't know, like I just, I don't have like, I don't have the personality for that. Like I do take things like very personal and I, because you put so much of yourself into it, it's like, you, I can't detach. It's like, and you right. love it so much. It's like, why wouldn't everybody right. else love right. it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so initially, I was kind of like, I didn't really think I was going to do much with it. I kind of thought like, I might design and like put things out. And if they do well, they do well. But like, it's a hobby. It's not something, you know, at the end of the day, like, it is what it is. is don't. And, and I just became a Addicted. Like, <laughs> I didn't realize how, mu how much I would like fall in love with it. Yes. And the second like something was off my needles, something else was on. Um, <laughs> also, during that time, like I had suffered um, a pretty scary medical emergency um, that left me with like major insomnia. And so I would knit like, because I didn't want to go to sleep. So I would knit like all night long until I was like so exhausted that there, you know, that I had to fall asleep mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I feel like I also like fast tracked, like because I didn't want it to just be like boring, just like mindless knitting. I needed to like distract mm -hmm. myself. So I kind of like, I would seek out like, okay, what's like a new technique that I don't know that I can learn that's going to be like complicated or, you know, enough of a distraction for my brain. And then once you learn those things and you're so excited to like put them into something, you know, it's kind of like you can't help but create something that uses that new thing or. Yes. So, yes, that's sort of <laughs> that's so sort of the path that we <laughs> went down. <laughs> I love that you bring up the herringbone because I, I don't know how long I'd been following you. It hadn't been that long. And then you like had shared one year designs with herringbone. And I had like 
just recently before that discovered herringbone and like gotten obsessed mm -hmm. with it and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> i see all of these herringbone things that you're designing so super fun and actually i am knitting on a project <laughs> that's using herringbone oh it's really nice <laughs> so ironically i um i'm about to bind off a pattern a brand new design that also has herringbone so this is a sweater that has this cool split collar ah oh, so cool. and depending on how we can get the camera angle here the hem which is is it in there yet nope not quite. it's like no. at the very there we go i don't know if we can yeah. see it yet yeah so it has a front split hem with the herringbone stitch and I'm I figured it was like it's a small enough dose in this one on big needles because it is difficult on big needles it's like tiring to your thumb but I just couldn't do this yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah this is uh my first sweater design actually mm -hmm. and I had to start with you know like I've wanted for years now yeah I own pullovers yeah. so. <laughs> awesome yes um so then we've talked a fair bit of creativity about creativity have you always considered yourself to be a creative person oh, i'm loving the comments about the herringbone <laughs> gorgeous no, love the herringbone no. <laughs> need to try hearing <laughs> yes, yes 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 um have you always considered yourself a creative person like you've you've mentioned you really enjoyed like arts and crafts yeah. hobbies but so i mean like i so like in elementary school i mean like i've always been into like painting and pottery photography for as long as i can remember but also like i used to, to like redesign my bedroom like once a month yes, and then sometimes my mom would come home from work and i would have like rearranged the living room and she was kind of just like okay <laughs> So, um, yes, <laughs> I would say I've always, I've always been a creative person. That's, that's and it wasn't really like, you know, a taught thing. It's just like, yeah, that's just who I am. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love to ask that question because it can vary so much. We're all, I mean, the people that I'm featuring for designers, yeah. <laughs> we're all designers, um, but people have varying degrees of how they feel about creativity or how they feel about their own yeah. creativity and um you know like for myself i thought for the longest time i wasn't creative i love have always loved fiber art well arts or hobbies stuff in general sewing and paint mm -hmm. i've never considered myself good at any of them mm -hmm. um i always thought that i couldn't be creative and so i for the longest time I was like i can't ever design like i i couldn't be creative and um about myself for a little bit I guess but I um uh, I studied architectural engineering in college and part of that was because I was like I didn't feel like I could depend on my creativity to just do architecture mm -hmm. and then I'm like end up with this engineering degree and I'm like this is really boring I need some creativity right yeah so that's when yeah. I actually started doing interior design and absolutely loved it yeah. but uh, yeah so it's, it's just it's interesting you know how we all arrive where we're at i think it's hard too because i feel like arts aren't in school aren't really given like the same i don't even know the word like appreciation mm. as other things you know it's like such a focus on like the core subjects and so i even see it like in my daughter, for example, I mean, she's a natural artist and she loves it. And she's just, she's good at it. She's just, since she was little, like she used to make these like paper dragons, these like three dimensional paper dragons that she would decorate on both sides when she was like four years old, <laughs> incredible. And, you know, but like those things aren't in school, it's kind of like, you know, art is like your, one of those rotating subjects that it's like, yeah, okay, you're great at art. Like, no one cares you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i think it's hard because you have to really like you have to find someone who i think 
encourages it for you or helps you like appreciate mm -hmm. the natural skill that you have. And if that's never really like developed because you don't like, if you never have someone say to you, you're a natural artist, like you have to do something with this. Like, I think it's easy mm -hmm. to just think that that talent is like a useless talent and you have to rely on something else. Like, yes. As yes. And I think also just the way our society operates, like we struggle to like accept or acknowledge that there's so many different forms of creativity. It's like to be talented as an artist, like you need to be able to create a certain kind of art or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then like, Otherwise, it's not really appreciated <laughs> right. and it's not valued. Um, but there's so many different forms of of creativity and art, even within a single medium. Right. That, you know, it's not, not something that that's so easy to grade and like, you know, from a teacher perspective. Right. <laughs> so then it more difficult within our, our school structures. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And all, I mean, and I think that's like evident also in in knitwear design, right? Like, there's obviously there's all these trends that definitely will like lead the market mm -hmm. every year. And I feel like, you know, I've noticed from in myself, it's like the times when I just imp it's like an impromptu cast on I'm like, I am just feeling this thing today, and I need to do it. And it's not about anybody else. It's about me. And those often end up doing really well but it's but more than that whether they do well or not I think like as creators we need to like fill ourselves yeah. with the things that bring us joy and if we're like trying to create based off of what we think someone else wants out of us then even if we deliver that product like is it fulfilling Absolutely. I don't you know yeah. I struggle with that I feel like not so much because you kind of feel like you're you're making for someone else and mm -hmm. I don't know yeah I totally agree and I you know like at that point it kind of feels like more of a job than a passion right um, to be creating because it's like okay I should be doing this because this is the right thing to do or this is the successful thing to do instead of saying I'm creating this because I love it and right you know that's that's what I'm passionate about and yeah passion is actually a very strong, <laughs> we want to talk about different societal aspects. It's hard, it's easier to say this is the way to do things and to structure mm -hmm. things and everything else. But uh, passion is something that people love to see and are attracted to. And so, yeah. you know, when, when we create out of passion and we share out of passion, people get excited about it. Right. Purely yeah. <laughs> But it's it's hard to like put numbers to that and say, okay, this is going to be successful and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. And I, th I think also like when you kind of just make that decision that it's not about it being the trendy thing, it's like, this is just what I feel like I need to create. There's also then on the other side, like more of that like stressful pressure once you put it out there, because then you're like acknowledging like, okay, I didn't do what I think everybody, you know, is asking of me or wants me to do. I did this whole other thing because like my heart told me to do it. <laughs> Please don't hate it. <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Oh, it's so interesting. And I feel like it always leads back to, I like to have conversations about different definitions of success mm -hmm. and so like as a designer you have to be really clear on like all right what do I really want from this what does it need to mean to me like most likely it's not all about the money right. <laughs> not right. all about how many patterns you sell but but really being clear on on what what is important to right. you can help us stay grounded even yeah. when pattern releases don't go how we want it to right yep <laughs> Yes. Um, so I'd love to hear more about like your interior designing, how you got into it. And like, if you feel like your interior design background now or how it affects your, your network design. So, um, well, as I mentioned, I mean, I used to, like, I used to just rearrange <laughs> rooms in my house <laughs> as a kid. Um, so 
I remember growing up, like, I remember saying, I also horseback rode as a kid. And I remember saying, I either want to be a large animal vet or an interior designer. And like, I didn't really feel like I had another choice. Like my <laughs> love of horses and my love of interior design were like both, so, like, mm -hmm. it just, like, that's who I am. There isn't like this other thing that I could try to make myself do. There's just no way. Um, and then I remember like coming to terms with the fact that as a large animal vet, I would inevitably have to put horses down and I couldn't bear the thought of that. And, you know, the more I dove into it, it was kind of like, I mean, I love horses, but like, do I love dealing with sick horses? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so, so interior design it was. <laughs> and um, I mean, I went to Drexel in Philadelphia. Um, I, I loved probably like every minute of college. I mean, I had, at Drexel, it's, you get a Bachelor of Science in Interior Design, it's not a Bachelor of Art. And so with that comes taking sort of like some art history classes and some classes that are more like borderline architecture, um, interior architecture. And so I feel like my education was like so well-rounded that I was like, I was incredibly excited. You know, I like, I picked the right thing for sure. And then you get into like the real world. And so uh, <laughs> it's hard, you know, like I did residential design and I won't say that I loved it. I really did love it. And I love working with clients, but it also, I think, and this is my personality, I'm sure. But again, you put so much of yourself into everything that you design and create and um it's hard i think at the end of the day to be able to like to separate myself from that and so at, in this world of technology that we're in you know it kind of became like like i would leave my job and i would come home and it would still be like in my brain all the time like i would think about it all the time couldn't shut it off and so that was that was hard for me because I think that you you kind of, you need to be able to like separate yourself and I don't know it was <laughs> <laughs> like kind of all encompassing yeah. for me um, but I mean I like the projects that I worked on were amazing I like enjoy so many like wonderful clients and just like really fun projects like whether it was my taste or not yes it's still like it's just very I don't know it's very exciting to like start with nothing and like to build an entire room and um so I don't know I think it's a lot of fun to also be able to play with other styles that aren't your own yeah. you know like it's and I guess maybe this also can be applied to network design maybe folks do find it fulfilling to, to knit stuff for but or to design stuff that other people love that they don't. Um, mm -hmm. But like just being, it's like, it's a just a very fun creative space where it's like, all right, I want to choose this for myself. I want to put this in my house. Yeah. But like just combining all the elements and things. That's yeah. Viable. <laughs> and I think like, if I didn't have my kids, I mean, I probably would have stayed in it. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I could recognize, I could acknowledge that like, I needed, like I needed to take a step back and I needed to be able to like be more present for them and available for them. And, um, and so like my love of like designing things didn't go anywhere. <laughs> so now I just like, you know, I'm constantly changing things in my own house. Um, but I don't know, like I, as I learned, as I learned to knit and I really like loved putting together like different patterns I feel like there was definitely an overlap of my love for interior design and what I loved about it and how I liked to like, you know, put together color pairings and different textures that complement each other. That all kind of just like rolled into knitwear design. And so in my head, I feel like it still like fulfills that same kind of like creating like need and drive and that while they are wildly different, they're also like, just the way I think I approach a design 
is very similar. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So what is your design process? How does, how do you find inspiration? What steps do you take? So I wouldn't say that I find inspiration. <laughs> it more finds me. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's really wild. So I often dream up designs. I wake up sometimes in the middle of the night and I have to like jot something down. Um, but it's like, it's, it's weird things. It's, I will see a yarn and like, and love it and kind of like, and not know what to do with it. And it'll just be like sitting there. And then all of a sudden, you know, like I'll be in the middle of like grading a different, a pattern for something else. And, and I'm kind of like staring off at it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, I know what I want to do with that thing. Or like, on my drives, like to and from the barn, you know, like just seeing different things in nature. I feel like nature inspires me a lot. Um, I, I don't, it's, it's, I feel like it's really weird for me to say I have no idea, but I kind of have no idea. Like, yeah. It's very organic. It, it is. And it just kind of like, I like designs sort of just like pop into my head or like I will finish one design and then there will be certain aspects of it that I really love that I'm like, Oh, I need to like take this and this and this and like put it into this other thing in this other application. And um, so like, that's kind of the process and which is actually why I feel like I'm trying to kind of take a step back from certain collaborations just because I feel like when I'm trying to design within like someone else's parameters, it's really, really hard for me to like pull together the design. Um, it's just, it's one of those things that I feel like I, I need, like I kind of need it to be an organic process. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then for it to be fulfilling, like while I'm all the hours that I'm working on it, it I just think that's kind of like where, where I've gotten in the past three years of just like my own self-realization is that like I do much better when I'm inspired by whatever I'm inspired by and then so it's usually like unless yarn really like did inspire design it's usually that I think up something and then I look for the yarn yes. like that kind of like you know will make that design um but yeah I don't <laughs> I know. I feel like that's a cop out answer that it, like that the idea just like falls out of the air <laughs> inside my head. But no, I I I totally get it. Like I I sometimes have kind of specific inspiration where I'm like usually like like I'm trying to create a story around emotion or something like that. But sometimes I'm just like, oh, what if I were to put a bunch of stitches together or like I don't I don't usually have a single source inspiration mm -hmm. uh, and yeah yeah but I also agree designing in somebody else's parameters for knitwear design is near impossible like to actually create a design that you love like obviously I, you can create something mm -hmm. but then to have have that element of passion behind it mm -hmm. is difficult to create when it's not organically created I guess yeah, yeah. where like with interior design design architectural design that kind of stuff somehow it feels easier to like you know like if you have all these constraints from the client mm. and like it's not so problematic to come up with a design but like somehow this design process feels totally different yeah. in that aspect. <laughs> well, I think also though at, you know in that aspect it's you have the parameters from the client and at the end of the day it only really matters that like they love yeah. it yeah. Whereas yeah. design collaborations where there's a parameter, like I still need <laughs> people want to buy this pattern. <laughs> I still want to be able to love it to actually yeah. encourage people to purchase the pattern. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because, you know, it's the payment. When you're working for a client, you're guaranteed. I mean, nothing's 100% guaranteed, but. You're, you have a contract right. and you're guaranteed the, the money where you, when we're creating designs, there's no guarantee there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <So definitely>, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is your favorite thing about both knitting and designing? 
Um, I think it's just, it's the same as like what I loved about painting in college. I feel like there's so much opportunity to like express who you are in this like abstract way. Mm -hmm. And um, whether it's, and I mean, it's the combination of things, but whether it's like the color palette that you picked that just resonates with you in a certain time because of whatever, um, you know, like for the most part, no one else is going to have like the exact same finished product as you and I just think like there's something really special in being able to like take nothing take yarn and needles and like start with nothing and end up with a finished something that you can hold in your hands that is you like yes. that it can express who you are and I don't know so I think that's just it's very rewarding and I I often will look back at designs and like, I remember, like I can so easily identify the headspace I was in <laughs> while I was creating it and what was going on in my life that kind of like led me to that color palette or that mood or whatever it was, you know? Um, and so it's sort of like a time capsule of like who we are at different stages in our life. And that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So do you feel like all of your designs still feel like in alignment with who you are now like do you love to wear all of your designs do you love to knit all of your like would you still be interested in knitting all of your designs or do you feel like it's kind of a past version of you for some of them you know so i do think that like there are some of my patterns that i would love to actually like re-knit in like a different palette or make some tweaks to them and that's actually something that i've planned on working on um, just you know whether it's like pattern construction things that I know now that I didn't really realize then that I could improve the fit of something and so like it irks me that like that it currently doesn't have yeah. that improved whatever. <laughs> or, or you know or the one, ones where it like it did feel forced whether it's the palette that like that I don't really love that doesn't like feel like me and I and if I re-knit it in a different yarn I would love it you know kind of thing um or something that just like feels forced like that I was that I got stuck and I like needed to finish it or needed to you know like sometimes you just get to a point where like I want this off myself yes. <laughs> and, and I feel like now like who I am now I will I will rip out an entire something and like feel better that I did it because I want it I like I want to love it yes. but I feel like in the beginning especially like starting out where you don't feel like you have any spare time like the idea of frogging an entire something was just like not you know like not a possibility yes. and so you know, so I do feel like some of my designs, like I don't love that, like now I don't love them as much as I would if I had like tweaked something or made a different decision. Yeah. Um, I don't hate any of them. There's not like, I I can't think of a single pattern that um, that I'm like, Ugh, why did I do that? <laughs> like completely hate, but there's yeah. several that I think that I will be like revamping and kind of updating the pattern to include some you know different instructions and whatnot yeah yeah i can totally totally relate <laughs> some of my my earlier designs it's like i did a lot of like i well for starters i didn't really this whole de designing journey business journey has really also been a journey of me getting to know myself i didn't know my color palettes i didn't know you know what i loved and what i hated mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um so there's a a lot of stuff I did just for the challenge or for playing around with textures and stitches. And so then a lot of the colors I, I used as like forms of symbolism mm -hmm. and how it's like, I, I, there's, I will never wear those colors. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I've also thought of going back and remitting different. I have done a little bit, but yeah. 
examples and things. Um, somebody asked in the comments, what's your favorite design so far? Um, my, I have a couple different, I have a couple of favorites depending on like category and actually, so I have like my favorite sweater, I think, and I wear it all the time is my Strata sweater. Yes. And, um, and this palette is like, was a little bit different for me, but I like have fallen in love with this like corally color. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it's one of those, it's one of those patterns that like, I feel like I can wear it with anything and just like feel happy about it. It doesn't like take effort for me to like, what should I pair with it? I kind of <laughs> can, like put it on and I know that I love it. And um, so yeah, so it's kind of become like a go-to when I just like, when I want to wear a hand knit and I don't want to have to like fuss about it at all. <laughs> um, and my, the Sun and Soul wrap is by far one of my favorite shawls. And I, I added a little button to it so that I can secure it when it's wrapped around. I did like a button and a little like loop somewhere. Yeah. Um, because I wear it so often <laughs> that, and you know, like shawl, like the weight of it and like the slinkiness of it, it'll like come undone. So. Mm -hmm actually got a little retrofit so that it'll stay put all the time but and again like and these colors are like a, a little bit cheery for me but I feel like in my accessories I really like that because I wear so much like gray and navy and just like olive green like the dark neutrals mm -hmm. that having fun colors in my accessories like whether it's to support the happy mood I'm in or to <laughs> look up what I'm in. <laughs> it's kind of a win. Yes. Um, and the hat that I just released today, I think, is definitely going to become a favorite. This is my winter farm toque that I just released today. And I actually knit it to be a gauge swatch four cuffs of a sweater design that will be in the works. Um, but I can't, I hate, like, I really dislike like, knitting color work swatches in the round for nothing. So I <laughs> like, meant to have, and that's kind of why this started and what happened. And then, and I fell in love with it. So, so fun. Fun. yeah. What other designs do you have coming up? Or what are you excited about? So, um, what do I, what? <laughs> <laughs> where did I put? I have a sweater. So, well, in my lap right now that I'm currently knitting on and working on is a shawl in um, Farmer's Daughter Fibers in the Recollect yarn. And I'm pretty obsessed with this one. I plan on finishing it like calmly next week mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm not working yes. um, because it doesn't feel like work. This is like such an enjoyable knit. So, so this will be coming up in late winter, early spring. And then the sweater that I showed before that has the herringbone split hem, I will be putting up for testing like in a week, maybe. Um, Folks are saying about the one you were working on at Rhinebeck, so good, ooh wow, and gorgeous. <laughs> yes, so I, I did. I cast it on, I started it in Rhinebeck, but I had like, you know, my schedule that had already been determined and so I've only like this whole time I feel like I only ever knit on it for like half an hour because <laughs> and I'm like oh this other thing that I'm supposed to be finishing but um no I'm so excited about it um this is a sweater that I 
that's all, all wrinkled, but <laughs> and, uh, less traveled yarn has a fun lateral braid detail there. So pretty. And then the cuffs are uh, fisherman's rib. Mm -hmm. So I won't knit brioche, but I did teach myself fisherman's rib instead. <laughs> and, and it has like this cute cable detailing. Oh, the fun. So this will be coming will, um, end of January that will be released. And then I have, I, admittedly, I have like four things on my needles. I'm really bad about that. Um, so I have a lot of designs that I'm like super excited about for next year. And I don't know where the other ones are. <laughs> Just sneak peek into you. That's super fun. We're getting lots and lots of hearts. Oh, okay. um, so I feel like we've chatted a bit about some of your other hobbies and interests, but is there anything else you want to say about them or other that you haven't talked about? You've talked about photography, painting, like yeah. very briefly. Yeah. I mean, my, my other like main hobby, of course, is horseback riding. Um, if you've, you know, anyone who's been following me for a while has probably seen like more pictures of Lola than they care to see, but I love I'll, her. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take them anytime. <laughs> well, I once asked in my stories, like, have you been missing seeing photos of Lola? And like a bunch of people said yes. And then a couple of people were like, no, I hate horses. <laughs> but I'm like, well, I mean, I get it. Like, they're not for everybody. But There's also, you know, you have to account for Sometimes people are just tapping through stories and yeah. they're like, right. and respond to I'm, something. I'm just going to assume that all the no I hate horses <laughs> was they were just tapping through. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and actually, you know, I think I thank the pandemic for that. Um, I grew up riding and I love it. Like, I can't put into words how much I love it. And with how busy I, you know, like as an adult, just being super busy and then the kids and being young, I remember saying to my husband like years ago when our kids were really little, I said, I really hope that one day they want to ride because I would love to get back into it. But like, I know myself and it won't just be like a one day a week thing. It's going to be like me as a kid again. Yes. <laughs> so, um, what we were on vacation um in the first summer of covid and we like did a trail ride with the kids in new hampshire and they like we hadn't even finished it and they were like can we start taking riding lessons and i mean i think i'd like booked lessons for them before we'd even come home <laughs> but it was also awesome because it was like an outdoor activity mm -hmm. so like it, you know like mm -hmm. during a time when like most indoor things weren't happening that was happening because it was outdoors and um it probably took me a month i think about a month or so before i said to the trainer like okay i need to start riding again that's the rest of this is history <laughs> on that one <laughs> and do your kids still ride they 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 yep yes yep they're little jumpers they love it <laughs> but so what does a day in the life of Tiff look like? What What is your normal day or week or week? Um, let's, well, a normal day is, you know, I wake up and I come downstairs and I stand in my kitchen with like my dog staring at me like, <laughs> are you going to play with me? And I drink a cup of coffee like in complete silence in my kitchen. And then I go wake up my kids after I've had like my first cup of coffee and um so it's like you know all the fun that comes along with getting two tired kids out the door <laughs> they're out by like 8 20 and then i have my second cup of coffee which is supposed to be my last one of the day <laughs> and, <laughs> um you know and then i like per i need to like peruse instagram for 30 minutes to like decompress from like how crazy it is to deal with kids in the morning and then, um, you know, and then I work straight till like they get home around three thirty, and I'm still usually doing work until like four thirty or five. Um, I try to not grade patterns on a Monday or a Friday 
because that seems to like it's like it's I, I feel like I spend so much time grading and like really long days doing it that like if I start my week or end my week like that it makes me really grouchy <laughs> so I try to make those be like work like actual knitting days not pattern grading days um but so that's like a typical day and de or depending on the day of the week uh, I do I do ride three times a week um in the afternoon uh Sundays I ride in the middle of the day and that's kind of like a perfect like excuse to leave the house especially this time of year um and it's like I you know I needed it because like I said I will work from I will work all day you know that's the thing right when you work from home is that like it's right there so you can do it so like and I knit every evening so sometimes I mean I used to it was bad I used to stay up to like 1 a.m knitting just because I wanted to have like quiet time to do it um I've kind of like I've I've sort of disallowed myself from staying up after like 11 30 now but um yeah yes that's yes I well, <laughs> think are just working in general and uh yeah we're both night owls and so it's a <laughs> it's easy to slip back in that yeah you yeah. have to have with yourself <laughs> oh yeah yes yes that's so fun thanks so much for for sharing i'm gonna see i uh i had a list did i ever look at my list of things oh. probably not but um I think I asked everything. So is there anything else you want to share about yourself or what you have coming up in 2023, what you're excited for? Um, um, well, I'm teaching at Squam in September, which I'm super excited about. Um, and I'm kind of like finally feeling like okay again about teaching so I will hopefully schedule a couple more things throughout the year um but I don't know I've I I'm going into the year I think trying to a stop having like 532 projects on the needles at the same yeah. time <laughs> <laughs> um and I'm just kind of trying to like maybe slow down a little to to kind of like giving myself like the okay to slow down and breathe a little bit because you know it's hard when you're starting out that like you like i said you feel like you don't have like any time to spare right and and it's draining so i'm hoping to just kind of approach the new year with like a little bit different a calmer mindset and fingers crossed that <laughs> that's the right decision yeah. but yeah. I, th I think it's always Hopeful. I've I've kind of been working on that the last couple of years of just you know really slowing down and focusing. I think it really, I think it helps a lot with intentionality mm -hmm. and alignment. And I don't know if it's ever a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So what what are you will you be teaching or what do you typically teach? Um, well, so the the class at Squam will be um, a combination of color work and herringbone stitch um and the color work is kind of like how how to put together different like color palettes um or where to draw inspiration from for putting together the color palette um and actually i mean i've only taught a couple of times because then with the pandemic like we didn't but so herringbone stitch always is like front and center <laughs> Um, but I would be, I would love to teach other things as well. So, yes, yes, yeah. so fun. Well, this has been absolutely lovely chatting with you. It's been so much fun. I wish I, I live in North Carolina, so I wish we lived closer. Yeah. <laughs> but I have my spouse's, he has family that lives in Connecticut, so we've been up there once, and maybe we'll be up there again. again. But um, where can folks find you online? So um, on Instagram, I am at Tiff Nealon, T-I-F-N-E-I-L-A-N underscore, right? Tiff Nealon underscore hand knits. I like forgot <laughs> what my handle was. 
Oh boy, I think that's it. Um, and on Ravelry, it is listed as Tiff Nealon and or Tiff Handknits. Um, and then my website is tiffhandknits.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, yeah. Tiff, for for hanging out, for everything that you shared, for everybody yeah. live. Uh, the replay will be available later today. Um, it's just been, been such a pleasure. I hope everybody has a beautiful rest of your day and beautiful rest of your week, beautiful holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on right now, but I'm um, oh, yeah. so glad we were able to make time for this. So it's been, it's been lovely. <laughs> Thank you for having um, me. Absolutely. We'll chat later. Okay. Take care. Bye.